the objective of the public lecture series was to for us to have in-depth conversations about um, issues affecting us as a society. As a country, we normally have a lot of conversations on social media, and there's a lot of truths, half-truths, myths that get discussed and then just quietly left out. The idea behind this session is for us to uh, bring in experts to empower you as a community and to empower the Kenyans to have the right information. So our inaugural topic, of course, was triggered by the KDHS report about Kenyans having multiple sexual partners. And we picked on that and thought, why don't we just discuss um, the sex lives of Kenyans as a whole? Obviously, we have to start from, you know, a logical point of view, which is the KDHS data. And, you know, it sort of shocked everyone. And it's the only thing that perhaps we picked up. And everyone was like, yeah, Kenyans having multiple sex partners. Oh my God, we're having a crisis. A few weeks later, there was super gonorrhea. It is here. Or it's not. Do we know? Let's start with you, uh, Doc. So what super gonorrhea means is that it's multiple drug resistance, Neisseria gonorrhea, which is the, the, the scientific name for the bacteria that causes. In the old times, we'd just give a simple antibiotics, which would actually be first line, and patients would actually respond to it. What we are seeing right now, that those first line drugs are not working. What we have to do, we have to culture the bacteria in the, in the, in the lab, and then do what we call a, a, a sensitivity test, where we have to find an antibiotic that actually works with it. That's basically what super gonorrhea is. The other thing is that it's transmittable, you know, and a lot of the times it's transmittable between say, sexual sexual relationship, um, homosexual relationship, and, and, and it's, it's, it's unfortunate that for women, we hardly get symptoms, and for men, uh, by day two, you're looking for us, you know, because of the symptoms of irritation, of the discharge, you know, pain when you're urinating, discomfort, some have fevers, you know, but for women it actually takes a long period of time. And unfortunately, because of that, we actually transmit it faster and also we get more complications. Gonorrhea becomes more resistant when actually uh, it's uh, isolated from the oropharyngeal or the anal region. Yeah, so because there's a lot of infections in those particular areas and there's a, a probability of this um, uh, bacteria going through genetic mutation and actually uh, becoming resistant to infection. So it is there. It's very, very interesting. If I give an example, if I can give an, an example, we did a study whereby we were swabbing the, um, the anal region, um, the penis and the pharyngeal to check for gonorrhea in Syria. And something uh, funny is uh, that um, we had, there was a lot of gonorrhea in the oral pharyngeal swabs compared to the penile and the anal. Research is evidence-based, so th this stuff is happening. So we need to know how to actually handle that. How does sexual liberation look to us as Kenyans? What do you think that is? For me, sexual liberation starts with open conversations about sex and what that looks like for people and creating the space for everyone to enjoy it without the fear of being caught, without the fear of being punished for having pleasure. Any life is hard enough as it is. Let us have pleasure, please! <laughs>